We're here with theCUBE covering Commvault Connections 21 and we're going to look at the data protection space and how cloud computing has advanced the way we think about backup, recovery and protecting our most critical data. Ranga Raja Gopalan, who is the Vice President of Products at Commvault and Steven Orban, who's the General Manager of AWS Marketplace and Control Services. Gents, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you, always a pleasure yeah, to see you. Yeah. Steve, Dave, thanks for having us, great very, to be here. Very welcome, Stephen. Uh, let's start with you. Look, the cloud has become a staple of digital infrastructure. I, I don't know where we'd be right now without being able to access enterprise services, IT services remotely. Um, but specifically, how are customers looking at, at backup and recovery in the cloud? Is it a kind of a replacement for existing strategies? Is it another layer of protection? H how are they thinking about that? Yeah, great question, Dave. And again, th thanks for having me. And I think, you know, look, if you look back to 15 years ago when the founders of AWS had the hypothesis that many enterprises, governments, and developers were going to want access to on-demand pay-as-you-go IT resources in the cloud, uh, none of us would have been able to predict that it would have matured and, um, you know, become the staple that it has uh, today over the last 15 years. Uh, but the reality is that a lot of these uh, enterprise customers, many of whom have been doing their own IT infrastructure for the last 10, 20 or, or, or multiple decades do have to kind of figure out how they deal with the, the change management of moving to the cloud. And while a lot of our customers um, will initially come to us because they're looking to save money or costs, almost all of them uh, decide to stay and go big because of the speed at which they're able to innovate on behalf of their customers. And when it comes to uh, storage and backup, that just plays right into to, to where they're headed. And there's a variety of different techniques that customers use, whether it be, you know, a lift and shift for a particular set of applications or a data center, or where it, where they do very much look at how can they replace the backup and recovery that they have on premises in the cloud using solutions like what we're partnering with Commvault to do, or completely reimagining their architecture for net new developments so that they can really move quickly for, for their customers. Um, and, and completely developing something brand new where it is really a, um, you know, a brand new uh, replacement and innovation for, for, for what they've done in the past. Great, thank you, Stephen. Raga, I, I want to ask you about the D word, digital. Look, if you're not a digital business today, you're basically out of business. So uh, my question to you, Raga, is, is how have you seen customers change the way they think about data protection during what I call the forced march to digital over the last 18, 19 months? Are customers you know, thinking about data protection differently today. Definitely Dave, and, and thank you for having me and Stephen, pleasure to join you on this uh, CUBE interview. Uh, first, going back to uh, Stephen's comments, can't agree more. Almost every business that we talk with today has a cloud first strategy, a cloud transformation mandate. And you know, the reality is back to your uh, digital comment, uh, Dave, there are many different paths to the hybrid multi-cloud. And different customers, you know, there are different parts of the journey. So as Steve was saying, most often customers, at least from a data protection perspective, start the conversation by thinking, hey, I have all these tips. Can I start using cloud as my air gap long-term retention target? And before they realize they start moving their workloads into the cloud and none of the backup and recovery SLAs are going to change. So you need to continue protecting the clouds, which is where the cloud native data protection comes in. And then they start innovating around DR. Can I use cloud as my DR site so that you know I don't need to maintain another site? So digital is all around us, cloud transformation is all around us. And, and the real essence of this partnership between AWS and Commvault is essentially to drive and simplify all the paths to the cloud, regardless of whether you're going to use it as a storage target or you know your production data center or your DR disaster recovery site. Yeah, so really is about providing that optionality for customers. I talked to a lot of customers who said, hey, our business resilience strategy was really too focused on DR. I've talked to other customers <clears> at the other end of the spectrum who said, we didn't even have a DR strategy. Now we're using the cloud for that. So it's, it's really all over the map and you want that optionality. So Stephen, and then, oh, go ahead, please. And sorry, ransomware plays a big role in many of these considerations as well, right? Like, it's unfortunately not a question of whether you're going to be hit by ransomware. It's almost become like, what do you do when you're hit by ransomware? And the ability to use the cloud scale to immediately bring up the resources, use the cloud backups has become a very popular choice simply because of the speed with which you can bring the business back to normal operations. The agility and the power that cloud brings to the table. 
Yeah, ransomware is scary. You don't you don't even need a high school degree, you know, diploma to be a ransomwareist. You could just go on the dark web and buy ransomware as a service and and do bad things, and hopefully you'll end up in jail. Uh, uh, Stephen, we know about the success of the AWS marketplace. Uh, you guys are partnering here. I'm interested in in how that partnership, you know, kind of where it started and how how it's evolving. Yeah, yeah happy to to highlight on that. So look, when we when we started AWS, or when the founders of AWS started AWS, as I said, 15 years ago, we, we realized very early on that while we were going to be able to provide a number of tools for customers to have on-demand access to compute, storage, networking, databases, uh, that many, uh, particularly enterprise and government, government customers, still use a wide range of tools and solutions from hundreds, if not in some cases, thousands of different partners. I mean, I talk to enterprises who, who literally use thousands of, of different vendors to help them deliver their solutions for their customers. So almost 10 years ago, we're almost at our 10 year anniversary for AWS Marketplace. We launched the first instantiation of AWS Marketplace, which allowed builders and customers to find, try, buy, and then deploy third party software solutions running on Amazon machine instances, also known as, as AMIs natively right in their AWS and cloud accounts to complement what they were doing in the cloud. And over the last nearly 10 years, we've evolved quite a bit uh, to the point where we support software in multiple different packaging types, whether it be Amazon machine instances, containers, machine learning models, uh, and of course, SaaS and the rise of software as a service. So customers don't have to manage the, the software themselves, but we also support uh, data products through the AWS data exchange and professional services for customers who want to get services to help them integrate the software into their environments. And we now do that across a wide range of procurement uh, options. So what used to be pay as you go, Amazon machine instances now includes multiple different ways to contract directly. The customer can do that directly with the vendor or with their channel partner or using kind of our, our public um, uh, e-commerce capabilities. And we're super excited. Um, uh, over the last couple of months, we've been partnering with Comval to get their industry leading um, backup and recovery solutions listed on AWS Marketplace, which is available for our collective customers now. So not only do they have access to Comvault's awesome solutions to help them protect against ransomware, as we talked about, and, and to manage their backup and recovery environments, but they can find and deploy that directly in one click right into their AWS accounts and consolidate their uh, their billing relationship right on the AWS invoice. And it's been awesome to work with, with Ranga and the, and the product teams at Commvault to really um, expose uh, those capabilities where Commvault's using a lot of different AWS services to, to provide a really great native experience for our collective customers as they migrate to the cloud. Yeah, the marketplace has been amazing. We've watched it evolve over the past decade and, and, and it's, a, it's a key characteristic of cloud. Everybody has a cloud today, right? Yeah, we're cloud too. But marketplace is unique uh, in, 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 in that it's the power of the ecosystem versus the resources of one. And Ranga, I wonder from, from your perspective, if you could talk about the partnership with AWS from your view and then specifically, you've got some hard news. I wonder if you could talk about that as well. Absolutely. So the, the partnership has been extending for more than 12 years, right? So AWS and Commvault have been bringing together solutions that help customers solve their data management challenges. And everything that we've been doing has been driven by the customer demand that we see, right? Customers are moving their workloads into the cloud. They're finding new ways of deploying the workloads and protecting them. Um, you know, earlier uh, we introduced cloud native integration with uh, the EBS APIs, which has driven almost 70% performance improvements in uh, backup and restores. Right? When you look at huge customers like Coca-Cola who have standardized on AWS and Commvault, that is the scale that they want to operate in. They manage around 150,000 snapshots, 1200 EC2 instances across six regions, but with just one resource dedicated for uh, the data management strategy. Right, so that's where the real built-in integration comes into play. And we've been extending it to make use of the cloud efficiencies like power management and auto scale and so on. Another aspect is our commitment to a radically simple customer experience. And that's, you know, I'm sure uh, Stephen would agree it's a big mantra at AWS as well. That's really together with the customer demand which brought us together to introduce Commvault into the AWS marketplace. Exactly the way Stephen described it, now, the hot announcement is Commvault Backup and Recovery is available in AWS Marketplace. So the exact four steps that Stephen mentioned, find, try, buy, and deploy, 
everything simplified through the marketplace so that our AWS customers can start using Palm Wall backup software in less than 20 minutes. A 60 day trial version is included in the product through marketplace. And you know, it's a single click buy. We use the cloud formation templates to deploy. So it becomes a super simple approach to protect the AWS workloads. And we protect a lot of them starting from EC2, RDS, DynamoDB, DocumentDB, um, you know, the, the containers, the, the list just keeps going on. So it, it becomes a very natural extension for our customers to make it super simple to start using Commvault uh, data protection for the AWS workloads. Well, the Commvault stack is very robust. You, you have an extremely mature stack. I want, I'm curious as to how this sort of came about. I mean, it had to be customer driven, I'm sure, where your customers say, hey, we're moving to the cloud. We had a lot of workloads in the cloud. <laughs> We're a Commvault customer, that intersection between Commvault and AWS customers. So, so I, again, I presume this was customer driven, but maybe you can give us a little insight and add some color to that, Ranga. Every, everything um, you know, in this collaboration has been customer driven. Um, we were earlier talking about the multiple paths to cloud and a very good example, and, and Stephen might probably add more color from his own experience at Dow Jones, but uh, I, I'll, I'll bring into reference Parsons, who's a you know, civil engineering leader they started with a cloud first mandate saying, we need to start moving all our backups to the cloud, but we are worried that bad actors might find it easy to go and access the backups. AWS and Commvault came together with the AWS security features and Commvault brought in its own authorization controls. And now we have moved more than 14 petabytes of backup data into the cloud. And it's so robust that not even the backup administrator can go and touch the backups without multiple levels of authorization, right? So the customer needs, whether it is from a security perspective, performance perspective, or in this case, from a simplicity perspective, is really what is driving us. And, and the need came exactly like that, Dave. There are many customers who have now standardized on AWS. They want to find everything through the AWS marketplace. They want to use their existing you know, the AWS contracts and also bring data strategy as part of that. So that, that's the real um, driver behind this. Um, Stephen and I were hoping Hoping to actually announce some of the customers that have actively started using it. You know, many uh, notable uh, customers have been behind this uh, innovation. Even I don't know if you wanted to add more to that. Yeah, I would just, I would, I would just add, Dave. You know, look, if I look back before I joined AWS seven years ago, I was the CIO at, at Dow Jones, and I was leading a, a fairly big cloud migration there over a number of years. And one of the impetuses for us moving to the cloud in the first place was when Hurricane Sandy hit, we had a real disaster recovery scenario in one of our New Jersey data centers. Um, and we had to act pretty quickly. Commvault was, was part of that solution. And I remember very clearly, uh, even back then, back in 2013, there being options available to help us accelerate our move to the cloud. And, and just to reiterate some of the stuff that, that Ranga was talking about, you know, Commvault's done a great job over the last more than a decade, taking features from things like EBS and S3 and EC2 and some of our networking capabilities and embedding them directly into their services so that customers are able to, you know, more quickly move their backup and recovery workloads to the cloud. So each and every one of those features was as a result of, uh, I'm sure, Commvault working backwards from their customer needs, just as we do at AWS. Okay. And uh, we're super excited to take that to the next level to give customers the the option to then also buy that right on their AWS invoice on AWS Marketplace. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to leave it there. Stephen, you've mentioned it several times, the sort of the, the early days of AWS. Back then we were talking about gigabytes and terabytes, and now we're talking about petabytes and beyond. Guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time and sharing the news with us. Dave, thanks for having us. All right, keep it right Thank there. You, More from Commvault Connections 21. You're watching theCUBE.